I'm about to give myself a physics problem that I've never solved before. Will I get it right? Let's see. Okay, so this here is a problem from the Anger Cambridge exam. Let's have a read through the actual problem. Your first step is to always read the question really carefully. It is crucial to understand what is physically happening. Relate this to the diagram and if there's no diagram to sketch. Um, it swings 90 degrees and it strikes the small the smaller sphere, the two spheres stick together and rise to a maximum height h as shown in the diagram. Which expression gives the height h in terms of l? We can assume that air resistance is actually negligible. Let's freeze time here. Drawing from your experience in problem solving is crucial in physics and this is exactly what I did just here. Now because I've solved similar problems such as these ones I can tell that this problem will be easiest to solve using conservation of energy. This whole system here is going to move at a certain speed v and that kinetic energy will get converted to some sort of potential energy at height h. So we can say that the kinetic energy right here will be given by a half. Now the total mass will be given by 2m plus m which is going to give me 3m times by v squared. Let's pause again. Notice how slowly I'm working here. This is because I suddenly felt a little bit worried, almost like exam pressure. I hadn't seen the problem before. What if I get it wrong? Well, in those cases, when you're feeling those exam nerves, the easiest way is to just focus on the fundamentals, focus on things that you definitely know and to write them down. Is going to give me the potential energy of this, which is going to be the same mass, or is that going to be 2m plus m, which is 3m. And then that will be multiplied by g and then multiplied by h. The masses will just cancel out. So the height h will just depend on the speed v. So we can say that h will be uh, a half. We have a factor of g here and then we have v squared here. So yeah, v, h is v squared over 2g. So right when I wrote this I realized that this problem is relatively simple and all I needed to do is figure out the speed v. The lesson is always start working on a problem even if you don't see the solution immediately. So for to find the initial speed of the system v going this way then we're probably in business. I then just took a second to see what to do next. We have this mass of 2m which strikes the lowercase or the smaller mass m and um, what we need to do is figure out its speed. Okay so if this thing is dropped from a height l then it's going to have some potential energy which will be given by 2m uh, g l. Then I used exactly the same method to figure out the speed v1 with which the mass 2m strikes the bottom of the arc. v1 will be the square root of 2gl. And now because they stick together we're going to need to conserve momentum. And this is an example of two topics in one question. If you've not revised or understood momentum very well this question would be impossible. So the total momentum in the system beforehand will be given by 2m. Uh, so I'm using m times v is equal to a constant. Total momentum before is going to be 2m times by v1 which is just the square root of 2gl. This will equal to the total momentum after the uh, collision. Now the masses have coalesced so the total mass will be 3m and the speed at which they're moving is just going to be v. 
Uh, okay, so let's just rearrange for V. We can get rid of this mass, uh, which will just be 2 over 3 root 2GL. Okay, um, we have this expression for the speed, so hopefully we should be able to just plug that in here and get the right answer. Uh, let's have a look. So H will be given by V squared. So V squared will be four. Mistakes often happen near the end of the problem and here I'm consciously slowing down and double checking everything as I'm writing. Okay, those two are going to get cancelled out, G is going to get cancelled out, so what we're left with is 4 over 9 times L. <laughs> now I think C is the correct answer, but the stakes are high here, so I'm going to check my time. And you should do that in exam if the time allows. Okay, I've double checked my work and I'm reasonably confident that the correct answer is C, but let's see. Okay, so this was question 11 from the 2022 paper. Let's go back to the mark scheme. So that is section 2, question 11. And the correct answer is indeed C. Excellent. Now there are far trickier questions on this paper and your journey to understanding this exam will not be complete until you have a look at the last question right over here.